Hello, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, and to everyone else out there that's about to become a saint, Lord willing. Another question coming to us off of the comment section on the ministry channel. The question is, can you show me why the rapture isn't found in the Old Testament, or in the four Gospels, or in the books of Hebrews through Revelation? That's a very good question, and uh, this is going to be a great study, and a very important one too, so stick around, and welcome. Now, if you're unsure about why the rapture isn't in those books, or if you can't answer those questions by using God's Word on your own, then I highly suggest you pay close attention to this study today, because we're going to go over everything. First things first, the only way you're ever going to understand the Bible is if you rightly divide God's Word. Paul tells Timothy the importance of rightly dividing God's Word in 2 Timothy 2.15. Paul says, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. And second, when you learn how to rightly divide God's Word, you're going to discover that God designed the past 6,000 years into different administrations or time periods or what we call dispensations dispensations of time now I've seen people lately trying to say that dispensations is a is a made-up word and the whole idea of right division and dispensation was created just recently and if you notice it's the same attack that they use against the rapture they use the same lies the same deception the same strategy the same technique and let me tell you why these people think dispensations is new and why they're trying to hide it. See, they think it's new because they're using the corrupted version of the Bible. So let's take a, a look at the real Bible for a minute and see what dispensations are. Paul tells us clearly what they are, but you have to use the right Bible. You have to stick with the King James Version Bible. It's very important. It is essential that you do that. In 1 Corinthians 9, 17, For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Now compare that to the NIV. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntary, voluntarily, I am simply discharging the, true, the trust committed to me. You see how they remove the word dispensation? In Ephesians 1.10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. The NIV, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Ephesians 3 2 if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word in IV surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you now the word administration is interesting here because it actually does explain what the word dispensation is and why they would remove the the word dispensation is beyond me and the only reason I could think they would do that is to hide the word right to make it a, a foreign word to those uh, that may hear it in the future administration is a dispensation and if you think about the administrations of the government the Obama administration is different than the Bush administration was the Bush administration was different than the Clinton administration Clinton's administration was very different than you know Reagan's administration and so on every president had their own administration or dispensation you see they created the government the way they wanted it to be they created the rules they created their laws they, they created all these different things they set up their own administration they created their own dispensation of government all right Colossians 1 25 to 26 whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints NIV 
I have become its servant. It's interesting they change the word minister to servant. Why would they do that? Does the word servant, easy, is it easier to understand what a servant is compared to a minister? You know? By the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. All right, so we know dispensations is in the Bible. It, it is a dispen, it is a, a, a biblical word, and we know that it is in its context. It means a different time period. It means a different administration. And we know that the people who are trying to hide the truth of God's word are doing it by creating corrupted versions of the Bible. Whenever you catch people trying to hide something, you have to ask a question, why? Why are they trying to hide this? And the answer is obvious. Understanding what dispensations are is the key to understanding God's word. Without understanding dispensations, you're wide open to deception. You're wide open to receiving whatever false doctrine they want you to believe. You see, right division and dispensation protects you from being tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine that's thrown at you. It's your shield to ward off the lies that are out there. And these people trying to hide the truth are well aware of what they're doing. They know that once you understand right division and dispensations, they've, they've got control over you. You've lost control because you've lost the ability to understand what God's word is actually saying. They can't control you with false doctrine, trying to put you, you know, back under the law, trying to manipulate you if you understand right division and dispensation. This is why you don't see the word dispensation in the new versions or the perversions of God's word. They're hiding the truth. Simply, once again, let me show you the seven dispensations or administrations or time periods throughout the Bible. And we just discovered one of them with Paul, the dispensation of grace. So there's six other ones. There's The first one is innocence with Adam and Eve and mankind. The second one is conscience. Again, Adam and Eve and mankind. The third one is human government under Noah. And it involves the world. The fourth one is promise. We see that with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God made a promise to them, made a covenant with them that he would build the nation of Israel. The fifth one is law. Under Moses, God hands over the laws to Moses to run and rule the nation of Israel. In the sixth one we went over is grace. That's today. We were given this dispensation by Paul. Paul received it directly from our Lord Jesus and then Paul started preaching the mystery gospel to the body of Christ. And again, this is the dispensation of grace. And the seventh one is kingdom. It comes after the rapture. It starts with the 70th week of Daniel. It involves the nation of Israel once again under the kingdom, under the prophecy program, and the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I know that's a lot of information. That's okay. Don't worry. I'm going to break this down for you with the remainder of the study. Now, the very first thing you have to know in order to understand why the rapture isn't in the Old Testament or the four Gospels or the end time books is that there is a difference between prophecy and mystery. And this is very important to understand. The Old Testament, the four Gospels, Hebrews through Revelation are all about the nation of Israel under the prophetic program, which is the kingdom program program. Paul's books, Romans through Philemon, are all about the body of Christ under the mystery program. There is no prophecy involved with the body of Christ. It was a mystery revealed to Paul by Jesus. Now in order to understand this even further, we're going to use this chart that's in front of us right now. Notice something peculiar about this chart. There's something missing. And what's missing, if you look closely, you'll notice that we are missing. The Gospel of Grace, the Mystery Program, the Apostle Paul is not on this chart. So what we're looking at here is the prophetic program for the nation of Israel. The prophetic program is everything that's been prophesied to happen to the nation of Israel in the Old Testament, in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in the books of Hebrews, through Jude, 
and even in Revelation, from the birth of the nation of Israel to the fulfillment of all the promises God made with them. Notice how the Bible is written. The Old Testament is too far and about the nation of Israel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four gospel, again, is about the nation of Israel and the promise of the coming kingdom and their coming Messiah. In the book of Acts, we see that there's a transition being made. The book of Acts is the actions or activities of the apostles, and we see a transition from the kingdom to the nation of Israel. It declines, it goes down with the stoning of Stephen, and we see a rise of a new gospel under the Apostle Paul, which is the gospel of grace. And Paul writes all about the gospel of grace in his books, Romans through Philemon. It's all about the body of Christ Jesus today. Hebrews through Revelation is after the rapture. Again, it's to the tribulation saints. It's for the nation of Israel. It's all about the Daniel 70th week, the prophecy of Daniel, the second coming, the prophecy of our Lord Jesus returning, and the prophecies uh, that were made concerning the 1,000 year reign. So what you're seeing on this chart before you is what would have happened. That's key. What would have happened if the nation of Israel would have repented when Stephen prophesied that the day of the Lord was at hand, that the kingdom was being at hand, and their Lord Jesus Christ had come, and he was the true Messiah. And John the Baptist was saying, listen, the day of the Lord is at hand. You remember what he was preaching in the wilderness. And the kingdom that's been prophesied from days of old is about to begin because our Messiah, Jesus, is here. Jesus was their Messiah, but they couldn't see it. They were blinded by the law. If you notice where the prophet Stephen is on this chart, take note that the very next thing to take place is Daniel's 70th week. It was the prophecy given to Daniel. The day of the Lord and the second coming and so on. It's important to understand that Daniel was a prophet. God revealed to Daniel all the things that were going to take place during the end days, even the book of Revelation. Then later, later on in the future, God reveals to the apostle John a more detailed view of Daniel's 70th week. God shows John exactly what was going to happen during the 70th week of Daniel. And this is our book of Revelation. John's Revelation was not about something new. It wasn't a mystery that never had been revealed before. John's revelation was a more detailed version of Daniel's prophet, his prophecy of the 70th week. Again, for Daniel's people, for the Jews, for the nation of Israel, the book of Revelation is still a prophecy. It is a prophetic revelation. And it has nothing to do with the mystery program revealed to the Apostle Paul. When you rightly divide and you understand the different dispensations, God's different administration, God using prophecy for the nation of Israel, and then using the mystery given to the Apostle Paul for us today, for the body of Christ, then you'll understand. But since the nation of Israel didn't repent, since they rejected Stephen, God puts a hold on the kingdom program and he starts something new with a man named Paul. Now, the, more, the most important thing to take away from this chart is this. Notice that even without the body of Christ, even without Paul or the mystery gospel of grace, what's important to understand here is that the prophecy of Daniel, the book of Revelation, the, the scripture of Hebrew through Jude and so forth would have happened if the nation of Israel just would have repented and believed that Jesus was their Messiah. It would have happened without us being involved. You see, so Revelation, the book of Revelation, the book of Hebrews through Jude and Revelation is still part of the prophetic program for the nation of Israel. It has nothing to do with us. It was there before we came into existence. It was there before Jesus revealed the mystery to the Apostle Paul. So if we weren't invented yet, if, if we weren't, if the mystery wasn't revealed yet, and Revelation and Hebrews and all this did, then how can we be part of that system? We can't, you see. So now in this next chart, we look at what would have happened if when uh, if Israel well Israel rejected their Messiah, and we see what happened as a result of that. 
God puts a hold on the prophetic program and he reveals the mystery program to Paul and we see Paul here is the first person to receive the revelation the mystery gospel of grace the mystery program and a couple things that are very important to understand is that the mystery of the gospel of grace had never been known before Paul remember the mysteries revealed to Paul were not in the Old Testament they were not in the four Gospels and they are not in Hebrews through Revelation those are prophecies you're only going to find the mysteries in Romans through Philemon Paul's salvation began in Acts chapter 9 but Luke was the author of Acts not Paul and within the mystery program are other mysteries like the rapture for an example is one of the mysteries also the judgment seat of Christ is a mystery the building of a body of members is a mystery making us fellow heirs with the son being another mystery making us fellow heirs with the Jews it was another mystery because the gospel of grace uh, is neither Jew nor Greek we're all one body we have equal sonship in Christ Jesus in other words there's a list of mysteries things that never were revealed before into the nation of Israel things never mentioned by the prophecies that suddenly Jesus Christ reveals to the Apostle Paul a completely new gospel one separate from the kingdom gospel and one designed to save everyone both Jews and Gentiles together in one body under the prophetic program Israel is promised the earthly kingdom under the mystery program the body of Christ is promised the heavenly kingdom not the kingdom of heaven but the heavenly kingdom there's a difference and that's probably a good topic for a future study the rapture was something new that was revealed to Paul it's one of the mysteries in the new gospel of grace salvation without the law but by grace through faith alone in 1st Corinthians 15 now this I say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God neither doth corruption inherit incorruption behold I show you a mystery something never known before we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed now notice the prophecies in the Old Testament in Hebrews and Revelation and the four Gospels they all speak about the resurrection of the Old Testament Saints right so that was a prophecy the resurrection is part of the prophetic program but here Paul says I show you a mystery so it's not part of the resurrection program because it wouldn't have been a mystery to them this is something new verse 52 in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed the trumpet will sound in heaven the dead are raised the dead are taken from the grave they meet their souls in heaven and then Jesus comes with those saints he comes down and he shouts with the trump of God and we are changed and in a twinkling of an eye we're taken up to meet them in the clouds pay careful attention to verse 51 again Paul says I show you a mystery something that was never known before something that had never been prophesied by the prophets this is something different it's something new and it's outside of Israel's prophetic program we know the prophets prophesied hundreds of times concerning the resurrection of the saints at the second coming so obviously the resurrection wasn't a mystery right what Paul mentions here is something different something other than the resurrection of the Old Testament Saints this mystery Paul speaks about here concerns the body of Christ and it's not talking about the Old Testament Saints and their resurrection verse uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren again an indication that Paul is revealing something new to them concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout remember I said that earlier first the trumpet sounds in heaven the dead are raised they meet the souls in heaven Jesus brings 
those that died in him, in the saved people that died before, are with Jesus. Those are the saints. Jesus brings them down to the clouds. And then at the sound of his voice, at the trump of God, he that's when we're changed. That's when our bodies are changed in a twinkling of an eye, in a moment. And we meet Jesus and the saints in the clouds. So verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. That's, that's, our, that's when we're changed with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Okay, so now, now that you have some idea what would have happened to the nation of Israel if they would have repented and believed that Jesus was their Messiah as a nation. And, 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 but because they didn't do that, now you see how God revealed something new, a secret, a mystery. It's called the mystery gospel revealed to the Apostle Paul, and it is written for us in Romans through Philemon. The most important thing to understand before we move on here is that all throughout the Bible, prophecy was for the nation of Israel from Genesis to Revelation minus Paul's books. And the body of Christ is only found not in the prophetic program, but in the mystery program through Paul. Okay, so the prophecies are for Israel and the mysteries are for the body of Christ. I hope I got that point across loud and clear because it's important to understand that if you're ever going to understand why the rapture is not found outside of Paul's books. How do we know Jesus revealed a mystery gospel to Paul? Well, Paul tells us clearly over and over again that the gospel of grace was a mystery revealed to him by Jesus Christ himself. Look at Romans 16, verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none, no one, none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. The mystery gospel the secret hidden in the Lord since before the foundation of creation was so secret that not one of the sons of men knew it existed. Look here at Ephesians 3 verse 5, which in other ages was not made known. What other ages? Paul speaking about the other ages, the prophetic program involved with the nation of Israel. Everything that is considered other ages is everything outside of the mystery gospel. Okay, so which in other ages was not made known, the mystery was not made known to them, unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Galatians 1 verse 11, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. It is not part of the prophecy program for I neither received it of man neither was I taught it no one taught it to Paul but by the revelation of Jesus Christ Jesus Christ revealed this mystery and all the rest of the mysteries the rapture the judgment seat of Christ and so on he revealed these things to Paul alone so with that in mind everything outside of what was revealed to Paul was not part of this mystery those were all part of the prophecies to Israel. The rapture was a mystery revealed to Paul. The rapture was not a prophecy, but a mystery. Israel knew nothing about the rapture. The apostles knew nothing about the rapture. John the Baptist and Stephen knew nothing about the rapture. The promise of God's earthly kingdom goes all the way back to Adam and it continues with Israel they knew everything about that because the earthly kingdom and their prophecies concerning it 
were revealed to the apostles, were revealed to Daniel and Ezekiel and, and, and Zechariah and all the Old Testament saints. And they were revealed to John the Baptist and to Stephen. They knew all about those things. They learned about all the prophecies in the synagogues. They were very well aware with the resurrection of the Old Testament saints. They knew that the Lord was coming back at the second coming. They knew Daniel's 70th week was upon them, which is what we know today as the book of Revelation. We, they knew all these things. They didn't know any part of the mystery. You see, the mystery was only revealed to Paul. So after they reject the prophet Stephen and they kill him, then we see God pausing the kingdom program pausing the prophecy program then he reveals to Paul the mystery program the creation of the body of Christ Jesus containing both Jews and Gentiles one body made up of many members then when the body of Christ is removed at the rapture God restarts the kingdom program once again with Daniel's 70th week the prophecy you see and the seven year tribulation period and God gave John a more detailed view in the book of Revelation hence the book of Revelation which is a book of prophecy it is the prophecy that Daniel made the 70th week why is Revelation a book of prophecy because it's for the nation of Israel and not for the body of Christ we will be long gone before Daniel's 70th week even begins God revealed to John a play-by-play -play of the prophecy revealed to Daniel back in Daniel 9, 10, 11, 12. So God goes from the prophetic program over to the mystery program with Paul. After the rapture, he goes back to fulfilling the prophecy program once again. Why did God do it that way? Because God was dealing with Israel. Then they rejected him, so God starts a new program that he hid within himself since before the foundation of creation. This was a mystery, the body of Christ. And when the rapture takes place and the body of Christ is gone, God will go back to dealing with his covenant, his promises, his prophecies to the nation of Israel once again. We see prophecy, we see mystery, then we see back to prophecy. So, from what you've just learned up to this point, is the rapture found in the Old Testament? Can it be found in Matthew, you know, Luke? John and so on and, and, the, and Hebrews and, and through Jude and Revelation can't, is the rapture in those books if you understand everything we've just studied you'll understand why the rapture is not in those books it cannot be if you understand all of what we just said you can see clearly that the rapture cannot be outside of Paul's books it cannot be outside of the mystery program you see that would be mixing two programs it would be mixing Israel's prophetic program with Paul's mystery program and that always leads to confusion and that's being done today unfortunately and we know God is not the author of confusion and when you mix Israel's program the prophetic program with the mystery program the only outcome is confusion and if that's still not enough let's start getting deeper into the meat level of this study deeper into God's Word let's take a peek at some of the scripture where Jesus is talking about the events that are going to take place on the day of the Lord in Matthew 24 verse 36 but of that day and hour knoweth no man he's speaking of the day of the Lord and the second coming no not the angels in heaven but my father only but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one taken, the other left. It's, it's extremely important to understand the context here. Jesus is telling them the order of events at the second coming. And that it would be as a surprise for those on earth. They won't know the exact hour when it happens. Notice that there's people being taken away here. Jesus doesn't, he, he, he tells us, he doesn't tell them where these people are going in Matthew. But if you look further into the book of Luke, 
Luke records more about what Jesus said. Let's read Luke, Luke 17, 24. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of one part of the under heaven shineth under the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it, it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the day of that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And in that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not go down and take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return. Remember Lot's wife, whoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, and one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill again, grinding together, though one shall be taken and the other left. In verse 36, two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. And they, the little flock that was listening to him, say these words, they answered and said unto him, they said, Lord, where are these people being taken to? And the Lord says, and he said unto them, wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered. Again, the context here is Jesus explaining to the little flock that the order of events of his second coming would be the same as the flood and like the days of Lot. Now when you see that they were eating and drinking and marrying and so on, it doesn't mean that they were doing that on the day of the second coming. You see, we're looking at a 2,000 year time span. They were eating and drinking and marrying and things were going on and they were building and so forth. Yeah, we've been doing that for 2,000 years. And then suddenly, the day of the Lord is going to come upon the world as a surprise. It's going to hit him hard. They weren't expecting it. You see, the day of the Lord and the second coming comes as a surprise. So we need to look at it in context over a period of time. Those taken away in the days of Noah's flood were those that drowned and were taken away by the water, right? And those taken away in Lot's day were those that were killed by all the sulfur and the hailstones and everything that came down to Sodom and Gomorrah. Those that will be taken away at the second coming are those that the angels will gather and they will move them to a place of death. So here in Luke, Jesus tells, tells them where the people are taken to. They're not taken up to heaven. So this can't be the rapture. But they're taken to death. Jesus tells them that these people are going to be taken by the angels, the army of angels that he brings with him at the second coming. We see that in Revelation. These angels are going to go get the unbelievers. They're going to grab them by the back of the head and they're going to drag them over to the realm of death. And there you're going to see vultures. You're going to see birds that eat flesh feasting on these people. This is called the Great Supper of the Revelation. Great Supper in Revelation, rather. Revelation 19. Also known as the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. Where all the unbelievers are going to be taken by force by the army of angels. When Jesus comes at the second coming. And the angels are going to destroy them. And the birds are going to feast on their flesh. This is the Supper of the Lamb. I have a video all about the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. It's on my channel. And you can find it in the upload section. Also, I have several videos on my channel concerning uh, these parables. The ten virgins, the wheat and tares, the parable of the dragnet, the parable of two in the field, one taken, one left, and so forth. These are all on my channel. I suggest you take a look at those if you don't understand it. If you think the rapture is found in the book of Matthew and Luke, then you really need to watch these videos that I have on the parables and on the rapture and so forth. These parables all have one thing in common. They're all about the second coming. They're all about the nation of Israel. They're all about the prophetic program. You don't see the body of Christ here in these passages at all. First, the body of Christ is going to be gone at this point. Second, 
At the time Jesus spoke about these parables, the body of Christ didn't even exist. Paul wasn't even saved. The body of Christ was still a secret mystery at this point when Jesus was talking about this. It was revealed to Paul much later on. So what we see here in the four Gospels is all about the nation of Israel, the tribulation saints, going through Daniel's 70th week in the event known as the second coming, the day of the Lord, and so on. This is, this is all about the hour that no man knoweth. The hour that no man knoweth is the day of the Lord. It is Daniel's 70th week, the second coming, and all that. And it's going to come by surprise. It's going to come upon a world that is living normally, giving in marriage, eating, building, and so on. Then suddenly, Daniel's 70th week hits them like they've never been hit before. The day of the Lord is going to come when they least expect it as a thief in the night. For those who don't believe, God's wrath will come swiftly and suddenly on them. And this is the hour no man knoweth. Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 Because thou hast kept the word of my patience I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Here we see the hour of temptation the delusion the lie that will be brought upon the world because they didn't believe when they had a chance to. This is the apostasy the lie, the temptation, the falling away of all those who will follow the Antichrist and believe that the Antichrist is the real Messiah, he will cause them to fall away. The apostasy that Paul talks about in 2 Thessalonians 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, here he's talking about the day of the Lord, that day shall not come except there come a falling away. Okay, Paul was talking about at the end, the second coming, uh, the worst of the worst, Jacob's trouble the last three and a half years. He's saying, look, at those it's not going to come. The, the end of Daniel's 70th week will not come unless there are certain things that happen. First, you have to have the falling away. And the man of sin be revealed. Okay, The man of sin is being revealed at the middle of Daniel's 70th week. The son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God and that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. I also have a video on my channel about the falling away. And I recommend you watch that. If you don't understand what the falling away is, if you haven't been taught dispensation and right division, I highly recommend you watch the falling away video on my channel. Matthew chapter 24, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking. Okay, he's speaking before Daniel's 70th week here. That's what he's saying. They were eating and drinking and building and marrying, giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark, until the day Daniel's 70th week comes, the day of the Lord, and knew not until the flood came, until Daniel's 70th week came, the day of the Lord came, and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. He's telling them that during, during Daniel's 70th week, at the end, at the second coming, they're going to be taken away in the same fashion that they were back in Noah's day. Notice the order of events here. It's the same as in the days of Noah. The unbelievers were taken away and the believers were left in safety inside the boat. Okay, And those that are left in safety inside the boat in dur during Daniel's 70th week are going to be the little flock, the remnant that God supernaturally protects from the Antichrist. It's not the church. It is a group of Believers uh, that are of the nation of Israel, the 144,000 Jewish virgin men, the two witnesses, and so forth. It's all about the nation of Israel. God is going to save a small remnant of Jews. Because if he doesn't save them, if he doesn't protect them himself supernaturally, the Antichrist is going to destroy all flesh on the earth. And that's what he wants to do. Because, you see, the Antichrist knows if he can destroy all the Jews off the face of the earth, then God's covenant with the Jews can't be fulfilled. God's promises with the nation of Israel can't come to fruition if they're all gone. So God is going to supernaturally protect a group of Israels, Israelites. 
He's going to supernaturally protect them just like he did back when he brought them out of Egypt into the wilderness. He fed them. He clothed them. He protected them night and day all throughout that time period. And notice something else here. And this is important. Notice that the events at the second coming are directly opposite than the rapture. You see, the rapture, the believers are taken away up to heaven, caught up, the harpazo, the rapture, the mystery revealed to Paul. We're going to be taken up to heaven with Jesus and the other saints. All right? And that's the opposite. You see, the, the believers are taken and the unbelievers are left at the rapture. At the second coming, the unbelievers are taken to death and the believers are left on earth to go into the earthly kingdom. So we've seen two very distinct reasons why the rapture and the second coming are different events at different times. The rapture was a mystery. It wasn't part of the prophetic program. The second coming is part of the prophetic program that was known for thousands of years before Paul ever existed. The nation of Israel had prophets that told them all about the day of the Lord. In fact, they were told that one day they'd be resurrected in the flesh to rule and reign with the Lord on earth for a thousand years. This is prophecy. Unlike the rapture, the rapture was not prophecy. The rapture was a mystery revealed to Paul only when the nation of Israel rejected Stephen, their last prophet, and their last chance to accept Jesus as their Messiah, and their last chance to usher in the earthly kingdom, also known as the kingdom of heaven on earth, we see the events are opposite in the way they take place. The second coming, again, the unbelievers are taken away and the believers are left on earth to inherit the earthly kingdom. And in the rapture, it's the opposite. The believers are taken to heaven and the wicked are left to endure Daniel's 70th week. So, the rapture wasn't talking about in the Old Testament, in the four Gospels, or in the prophecy about Daniel's week, Hebrews through Revelation, because it wasn't a prophecy. It was a mystery, only to be revealed later to the Apostle Paul. Again, there's many videos on my channel covering the parables, the rapture, the trumpets, the falling away, and so on and so on. So please take advantage of them while you can before, you know, the powers that be here on this wicked world decide to remove all truth from the internet. Now, something else I want to mention here that's extremely important. There is a prophecy in the book of Micah, chapter 5. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Verse 3, Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Notice in verse 3, He, being God, will give them, being Israel, give Israel up until the time that she, the woman, the nation of Israel, which travaileth, hath brought forth. Now, we go to Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, that's the twelve tribes of, of Israel. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Look at verse 2. And she, the woman, being with child, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Notice the prophecy of Micah. And we know the prophecies are for who? For the nation of Israel, not the body of Christ. The body of Christ Jesus is the mystery of the gospel of grace. It was still a secret mystery when Micah made this prophetic statement, right? So we see in the book of Revelation, John again is given further details of a past prophecy that Micah made, also Daniel's prophecies, just like he gave further details about Daniel's 70th week. John sees a sign in the heavens. And this sign will be seen next year on the 23rd of September. I have a video all about this event on my channel called 923, the sign of the woman on 23 September 2017. If you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you take a look at it. So what is this sign and who is it for? Well, 
we know is for the nation of Israel because it's part of the prophecy program. Micah's prophecy spells it out clearly. Second, we know it's not part of the body of Christ because at the time Micah made this prophecy, the body of Christ, the gospel of grace, the 2,000 year span of time was still a secret to be revealed later on to Paul. You see, this sign is the warning that the nation of Israel is about to be born again spiritually, finally. You know that they were born physically when God took them out of Egypt. They were born physically. They could have been born again spiritually when Stephen prophesied, but they killed Stephen and God put a hold on that birth, the spiritual birth. So here, 2,000 years later, we see the sign of their coming spiritual birth, the coming 70th week of Daniel, where they're going to be baptized through fire, trials and tribulations, Jacob's trouble, the worst time in history or the future. Look at John 3, verse 6 real quick. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Verse 7 again. Marvel not that I, Jesus, said unto thee, Nicodemus, ye, the nation of Israel, must be born again. The word ye here is the key to understanding this verse. Jesus was saying, ye, the entire nation of Israel, needs to be born again spiritually. You see that? So, does this sign signify the day of the rapture? Absolutely not. It has nothing to do with the mystery program and everything to do with the prophetic program. If you look further down in Revelation 12 verse 6, And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should be fed, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. This is clearly a reference to the remnant that I was talking about a while ago that will be protected supernaturally from the Antichrist on earth. They will flee from Israel, from Jerusalem, and God will provide for them there until the second coming. Some say they're going to flee to, to Petra. Others say they're going to flee into the mountains of Jordan. Regardless, God is going to supernaturally uh, protect them in this place while the Antichrist is trying to get at him. And he's not going to be successful. This is not the rapture of the church, friends. When we're taken, we're taken and protected forever. We're taken to heaven. We're not just protected for 1260 days. And God doesn't have to feed us. You see, we're giving glorified bodies that don't eat. That neither marry nor are given in marriage. That do not have birth. Do not require food to sustain ourselves or to stay alive. We are giving glorified bodies. So God doesn't have to feed us. And we're protected forever at that point not just 1260 days we're going to be in heaven not on earth the remnant of the nation of israel will be on earth and god's going to provide for them for 1260 days he's going to feed them and clothe them just like he did back in egypt on the in the uh, wilderness and so forth our rapture that paul reveals one of the mysteries was the rapture it is imminent it could happen tonight it can happen tomorrow it will happen when the Lord is ready it's not gonna happen on a day meant for the nation of Israel and we've just studied out why there's a difference between us today and the prophetic program for the nation of Israel now could the rapture happen just prior to this sign or right after it sure it can happen whenever the Lord is ready only he will decide when it happens but it's going to be imminent but I want you to see here is that this sign is not for the body of Christ the woman is not giving birth to the body of Christ we were born 2,000 years ago don't let anyone tell you that they figured out when the rapture is going to take place you'll notice that these same people that do this have been doing this for the past 10 years and when their date passes you don't see them for another 10 months and then they suddenly pop back up just prior to the Feast of Trumpets to start date setting again, all the sensationalism, all the excitement, raking in the money. And when the Feast of Trumpets passes, you don't see them again for another nine, ten months. And then they start up all over again. 
So moving on back to Israel's prophetic program, notice what the nation of Israel had to do in the four Gospels to be born again spiritually. They had to repent and believe that Jesus was their Messiah. That's it. Then God gives the nation of Israel one more year to repent and believe. If you've never seen where God gives them another year, another chance, them being the nation of Israel, he gives the nation of Israel another chance to repent and believe that Jesus was their prophesied Messiah. If you've never seen that before, look at Luke chapter 8. He spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it to the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Here we see a conversation between God the Father and God the Son. God comes looking for any spiritual fruit out of the nation of Israel and he finds none. God the Son pleads with God the Father and he asks God the Father to wait another year to give them one more chance. So our Lord God gives them another chance by extending everything for another year but keep in mind, this is before Paul, before the mystery gospel of grace. Right? And at the end of the year, we see Stephen. Stephen finally, for the last time, prophesies before the nation of Israel. They don't want anything to do with Stephen or Jesus Christ, and they kill Stephen. That's the end of their year. So he reveals to Paul, God reveals to Paul at this point, that not only did he extend Israel's chance by another year, he was going to extend it by yet again, and now we know that he extended it for 2,000 years. Our Lord God is more than fair. He's loving, he's long-suffering, and he's giving mankind plenty of time, more than enough time to come to him through his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So back in the prophetic program, the dispensation of the kingdom, we see God giving them another year by using the prophet Stephen to warn them that the time has come, their year is up. And in the meantime, our Lord pays for the world's sins on the cross. Something that even the apostles were baffled over, they couldn't understand what just took place until it was finished. But after the crucifixion, the burial, and seeing Jesus in the flesh after the resurrection, their blindness was lifted and finally they understood what just happened. Not only did Jesus come to be their Messiah and usher in the earthly kingdom, but he also dies and resurrects and pays for the world's sins also. Even with everything Jesus did for them, and with the last witness of Stephen, the nation of Israel still refused for the last time. They kill Stephen, they stone him, and God then puts the kingdom program, the prophetic program, on pause. And keep in mind, this is a very powerful demonstration of how forgiving our Lord God really is. Keep in mind that Paul was, he was there helping them stone Stephen. Paul's hands were dirty with the blood of Stephen. God is so forgiving and loving that he chooses someone who helped kill the last prophet. He chooses Paul to change the world. God confronts Paul on his way to Damascus. And this is where Paul is converted from unbelief to belief in Christ Jesus as being God in the flesh. In Acts chapter 9, it is the birth of the body of Christ, the gospel of grace. Everything before that was still under the gospel of the kingdom, the prophetic program for the nation of Israel. Acts chapter 9, God reveals a new program to Paul, the body of Christ, the mystery gospel of grace, containing the mystery of the rapture, the judgment seat of Christ, the fellowshipping with the Jews, the fellowshipping with Christ, making us sons under God. And of course, Jesus, he didn't reveal all the, the mysteries to Paul all at once. Jesus revealed step by step the new program over Paul's 30 plus years in the ministry. Now we see a different program. Now we have to believe that Jesus was God in the flesh, that he died, was buried, and rose again for our sins in order for us to be saved. It's a new plan, a new system. It's different than the prophetic uh, kingdom system for Israel. And when our system ends, the dispensation of grace, when this ends with the rapture, the kingdom dispensation will once again 
be in the picture. And God is going to pick up where he left off with Stephen. And because the nation of Israel still hasn't repented as a nation, they're going to be brought through Daniel's 70th week, the book of Revelation. God is going to purify them like fine gold through trials and tribulation. He's going to baptize the nation of Israel through fire. Okay, that's where the, the, the phrase baptized through fire, that's where it comes from. That it's going to be Daniel's 70th week. Jacob's trouble. And everything will stop when they cry out as a nation and repent and believe that Jesus Christ is their Messiah. Finally, then Jesus will come back at the second coming and so on to establish the earthly kingdom promised to them through prophecies and by the covenants since the beginning of time. Now, in closing, I've shown you why the rapture was never mentioned in the Old Testament in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in Hebrews through Revelation, uh, or in Daniel's week of tribulation, and why the rapture can only be seen in the books that Paul wrote, Romans through Philemon. It's all about the body of Christ today and the mysteries that pertain to us. And also, something very interesting that happens on the September 23rd of next year, we've gone over that too, and why it's a sign for the nation of Israel. And I believe, I sincerely believe, something huge is coming soon. And I sincerely believe that our rapture is imminent. And if that something happens to be the beginning of the spiritual rebirth of Israel, then we know Daniel's week is very close. And that tells us, the body of Christ, uh, that are catching up. Our rapture is at hand. It could happen at any minute, folks. So the key is to always be ready. You need to be ready now. Get your spiritual affairs in order. Make sure you're saved according to the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 through 4. Whatever you do, do not put off salvation until next year when the sign of the woman takes place. That would be foolish. Because that sign is not for you. It's for the nation of Israel. It's the prophetic program. And we know that all the prophecies are for Israel, not for the body of Christ. Be ready now, friends. Today is high time for salvation in Christ Jesus, not tomorrow. If you're not sure if you're saved, then hang around in just a couple seconds. The rest of the video is going to be all about salvation. I want you to read it. It's seven, eight minutes long. Read it if you're not sure. And what you have to do in order to receive salvation. Make sure you're saved in eternity in Christ Jesus our Lord. Today is the day of salvation. The worst thing you could ever do is tell yourself that you're going to wait until you start seeing these signs of Daniel's 70th week to get serious. Because at that point, it's going to be impossible for you to get saved. Impossible. In fact, my next study, the next video, is going to be all about what happens to those who miss the rapture. I'm going to answer the question, is there a second chance to be saved after the rapture? So stay tuned for that study because you'll be surprised uh, what the answer is. And the very last thing, you've seen why it's so important to use the King James Version Bible only. And not the newer perversions. Those corrupted versions will confuse you more and more throughout time. And that's exactly what they're designed to do. Think about why the new versions are even created in the first place. You see, number one, God gives us his word for free. It's a free gift. Number two, man charges you a fee to have the free gift of God by copywriting his word. And along with that, man creates a middleman to profit off of something that God gives us for free. They change all the words, they add to it, they twist it, they remove the, the, the real meaning of the context, and so on. Can you imagine what it's going to be like for these men who are behind doing this to God's word and making his people suffer like this? What it's going to be like for them when they stand before the throne of God at their judgment? Not only are men responsible for this, but there are fallen entities directly connected to the new versions of the Bible. Evil entities are the ones behind this. And it's obvious. This is a spiritual war. When you use the corrupted versions of the Bible, you're using the enemy's words, not God's words. Think about that. And if you want to see all the perversions in the new versions, specifically the NIV, I have a video on my channel called Busted, Caught, Red-Handed. 
it's all about the scripture that's been changed removed added it compares the King James to the NIV so take a look at the video if you want more information all right so with that dear Saints peace grace love in Christ Jesus be with all of you and I'm gonna see you on the next video Lord Jesus willing